Okay, um, keeping appropriate data with specimens is critical. A specimen without data is, is effectively useless scientifically. So what I've done is create a loose leaf catalog that prompts me for all the important data associated with a specimen. Beginning with the date that it was taken, this in this case the 1st of March 2006, the species, Egolia cicaticus or Northern Sawwood Owl, then the locality, Alaska, Kodiak Island, Coast Guard Base, uh, Rezanoff Road. I've left blanks for each of the measurements. I don't have any information on habitat. The fact that I wrote uh, down right after preparing it was that it was very light. As you'll recall, we saw very little fat when I fleshed the skin. The ovary, I circulate, circle the uh, gonad that we found and then wrote down its dimensions. The largest ovum was perhaps one, one millimeter. They were pretty small. Uh, skull ossification is not important for owls. It's a useless aging character, so we won't use it. The stomach, as you'll recall, had the remains of a small passerine in it. Um, maybe a kinglet? We didn't know. Okay, I use several different types of pens as well. You note that I'm using a waterproof black ink ballpoint pen for the catalog itself. Of the disposition, I should mention, we've done a skin, we've done a partial skeleton, we've saved two tissue vials, and we've saved a stomach as well. I don't know who collected the bird, but I prepared it, and that makes the catalog entry complete. I weighed it and measured it uh, earlier. Now, when I've labeled the tissue vials... Let me move, move it. Sure, closer for the smaller mm -hmm. item. Okay. Uh, I've labeled the tissue vials with a Sharpie permanent, point, permanent marker. Uh, those are very good for frozen things, but they're very bad for ethanol. If you're going to put a label in ethanol, which we will with the stomach vials, I'll use a technical pen. Uh, I'll also use that for writing the specimen labels. Specimen labels then are written one for the uh, skin and one for the skeleton. And these are written by putting the same information onto this label format. Uh, the species is Egolia cicaticus. It's an adult female. It was taken on the 1st of March, found on the 1st of March 2006. It was found in Alaska on Kodiak Island. Coast Guard Base, uh, Rezanoff Road. On the back of the label, we flip over the label so that it reads not like a book page, but rather like this. On the back, we'll put first the mass, 87.4 grams. I don't have any information on habitat. But I do have information on measurements. The wing cord was 142 millimeters. Tail was 68.6. Tarsus is 24.1. The bill is 10.0. Bill height is 9.2 millimeters. Bill width was 6.2. And the skull length. Remember, we broke that skull, is 43.3. Fat was very light. There was no molt. The ovary was 18 and a half millimeters long by 5.8 millimeters wide the largest ova, approximately one millimeter in size. Stomach had the remains of a small passerine. My handwriting can be bad at times. We thought maybe it was a kinglet, but somebody can look at that later and confirm that. Uh, when I have bad handwriting, as I do with this one, I will put this label with the skeleton. Disposition, skin, partial skeleton, tissues, this means genetic tissues, stomach, and then the preparator is me, K. Winker. And then finally, 
the single number that ties all those parts together is KSW field catalog number 5306. KSW5306. And because that's an unlovely label, I'll write a much better one for the skin. I'll duplicate that number here so that if the beetles should chew on the paper, <laughs> they won't have gotten both of the numbers. That label then gets tied to the skeleton. The next label will have the same information, but I'll uh, be neater and less speedy in writing. We'll also put a small label inside the stomach vial in that alcohol. I'll use the same pen, technical pen, but for ease of retrieval, I'll label the top of the stomach vial with my field number. And it's just that easy. Okay, I've All got right. the um, skeleton label ready. I've got a label for the, s the stomach contents um, that I'll put in. But what's important to show, I think, is, the, is a standard museum label not. They're, they're uh, very idiosyncratic uh, and very standardized. I, you'll see the two pre-punched holes in the label. A label is threaded like this. So there's a loop in the front of that label. And then that loop is twisted and the uh, ends brought through like this so that you've got a, uh, a grip on the label like this. It keeps the label from sliding against the string. This is again white button and carpet thread. That's kind of a standard in the industry. And you tie both of those together and have a knot that's about one inch from the label. And that distance is also important helps prevent the label from getting caught up in the claws and uh, other specimens in the edges of the trays. And then the label is tied onto the bird. Um, in the case of the skeleton, I'll tie it very loosely through uh, the furculum so that the beetles can work their way around it. In the case of the skin, I'll tie it around both the stick and the leg.